Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Space Apps New York City. Um, I am so incredibly excited to see all of you guys here this morning. Um, we are about to embark on an amazing weekend. Uh, we have lots of uh, great people here. Um, we met a lot of you last night at our uh, Meet Astro Ron uh, kickoff party. It was great to see a lot of you there. Um, so uh, my name is Mike Caprio. Uh, I'm with uh, Startup Us. And uh, I just want to say a few quick things about uh, our great organizers before we get started. Um, so uh, we have here Alice Ang from the New York Tech Council and, is, and was also a Startup Us member. Uh, and we'd like to thank Ally NYC. Uh, give them, uh, if we can give them a round of applause, actually, it would be great. Thank you. Um, they've been a fantastic partner for us. They, uh, they are an amazing co-working space here in New York City. Um, they uh, have very generously provided us the space for the weekend, even into the wee hours of the, the night time if we need that. And uh, I just want to say thanks to Jason and Nancy. They really uh, have came through for us and got us some, some great sponsorships and brought in a lot of great uh, registrants. So um, I won't uh, take too much more time. Um, I want to say that we are going to start with a launch video uh, from NASA. They have an official every site uh, in our in the, the entire Space Apps Challenge starts with the launch video. Um, there are over 80 sites in over 40 countries and over 8,000 people registered worldwide. Um, so you guys are part of the galaxy's biggest hackathon. So this is, this is pretty amazing. Uh, so I'm just going to, we have to coordinate with our um, media team. So I'm going to cut off the mic here and contact the guy to get the sound system working for the video. So uh, just give us a minute and we will get that started. Was that a test? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're ready. Okay, on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. <laughs>
Greetings from the International Space Station. I'm NASA Flight Engineer Tom Marshburn, orbiting the Earth 250 miles above you, along with my five crewmates from the US, Canada, and Russia. Astronauts aren't the only ones with important jobs up here. People from around the planet are collaborating every day to make it possible for us to live and work in space, conducting world-class scientific research. Before I became an astronaut, I served as a NASA flight surgeon, as well as an aquanaut for NASA's extreme environment mission operations on the bottom of the ocean. Experience and innovation from every discipline are essential to improve life on Earth and advance all of us beyond low Earth orbit to further the cause of human exploration. To get there, we'll need your help. At the International Space Apps Challenge, people from dozens of nations, from every continent and every walk of life, will unite to solve problems on Earth and beyond. Will you join us? Help create, invent, build, and forge our future. Thanks for being a part of the International Space Apps Challenge. <laughs>
Maybe they're working from their local coffee shop. Maybe from their living room or their home office. We totally encourage those of you who are at a physical venue to collaborate together with those virtual participants, as well as SpaceX participants in other cities around the world. We've set up a few virtual collaboration tools to get you started, and we're excited to see where you take it from there. Facilitating the virtual participation this weekend will be Wayne Burke. Let's hear from Wayne about how this will work. Hi, I'm Wayne Burke, and we manage the virtual participation, which means I'll be sitting in front of a computer for most of the weekend. One of the coolest parts of the Space Apps Challenge is that you can work with people from all over the world. Well, there are only 75 physical locations, there are also hundreds of virtual participants, which all adds up to literally thousands of potential teammates that you can work with. My job is to help you find each other so you can form the best teams, create the best solutions, and have a great time doing it. So here's what you need to know. Read through the challenges which are on the website, figure out what you want to work on. On each challenge page, you'll find a matchmaking section. If you're looking for a team member, post the skills you're looking for and how to contact you. If you're looking for a team to work with, there's a section for that as well. Post your name, the skills that you bring, and your contact info. As things get rolling, I'll do my best to keep tabs on who's looking for what and make sure all of those connections happen. If you need anything from me, start with the virtual participation page at spaceappschallenge.org slash location slash virtual. That'll be my home base, containing all sorts of helpful information as well as how to reach me should you need to. We totally encourage you to do as much as possible this weekend to complete a working product and communicate what you've done in a video, on a presentation, or some other way online. And remember, comment your code, label your hardware, and keep the end user in mind when developing your solution. You truly have the opportunity this weekend to improve life on Earth and life in space. The best solutions will definitely live on beyond just this weekend and well into the future. Thank you so much for participating in the International Space Apps Challenge. We really look forward to seeing what you develop. Are you seriously still sitting there? You have less than 48 hours left to go. Go! That's awesome. That's my favorite part of the whole thing. Switch over to the second video.
have been chased to solve all the problems that we face in space? Do you think that you have what it takes to improve the technology we use in space? Announcing the space apps protocol. It's like a two-day phenomenon, marathon, marathon, space apps. This challenge is worldwide. Space apps, the call of these space apps. Go and have your code. Can you build a device and bring flights of Legos? Or can you make a great adventure space design? Can you make an app that tracks the stars in disguise? Can you make an app that tracks as a droid movement? Or make an app that you can post interstellar music? Or are you looking for an air traffic management? Want more? There are over 50 challenges. Space apps. This challenge is worldwide. Space apps. What will you design? Space apps. Go and have your code. Space apps. You just might change the globe. It doesn't matter if you're an expert, you qualify. If you're curious, then you qualify. If you're motivated, then you qualify. If you're passionate, then you qualify. Space apps. This challenge is worldwide. Space apps. What will you design? Space apps. Go and have your code. Space apps. You just might change the globe. Space apps. Mike Wilson here, A88 Community. The Space Staff Challenge is taking place April 20th and 21st in New York City and in over 75 cities around the world. There are over 50 projects in four key challenge areas. Software, hardware, data visualization, citizen science. And they're all focused on improving life on Earth and in space. You can learn more to find out at spacestaffchallenge.org and if you're in NYC, visit spacestaffnyc.com. <laughs> test, test, okay. Okay, so uh, that's the official start. Uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, just say a few more words uh, about the way we're going to do stuff today, and then we're going to launch into our uh, API sponsor uh, 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 introductions and discussion. Uh, so um, right now we are going to be limited to this space in the front area. So we're going to ask you to once we get uh, the API talks done to like to help pick up the chairs and we're going to reorganize some tables and stuff. So we're just confined to here and the cafe area for now. We may spill over into the other area, but just be aware of areas that are marked, reserved, and just to kind of stick to the space for now. Um, so I would like to ask, uh, and you can see here uh, all our sponsors up on the uh, um, projection here, but I would like to ask uh, John Gottfried from Twilio to come up. Thanks very much. Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, I'm John Gottfried and I'm a, a developer evangelist at Twilio. How many of you have heard of Twilio before? Oh man. How many of you have seen us demo Twilio before? Okay, so only less than half. Um, so for those of you who haven't heard of it, Twilio is a, a cloud communications platform that builds tools for awesome developers to add communications features like SMS, phone calls, and VoIP to your applications. So um, some of you will have seen this before, but um, I'm going to show you how Twilio works by writing a quick application up here on stage. So a good way to think about how uh, Twilio works is in the form of sort of IP addresses in relation to phone numbers. So you use an IP address to access a server, you use a phone number to access Twilio. So we're going to go ahead here and buy a quick phone number and I'll show you a little bit about how to set it up. So could someone yell out an area code right quick? Okay, I heard 917. Cool, so now I'm the uh, proud owner of this phone number right here. 
And I'm going to copy and paste that for later. So when I have this phone number, what it allows me to do is actually point it to a web server. And every phone call or SMS message that comes into this number will actually send along a request to your server. So if I go ahead here and put in the URL for uh, my server, can you guys hear me without the mic back there? Yeah? Awesome. So I'm going to put in the URL for my web server. Is that even know? Not at all? Oh. So I'm going to put in the URL for my web server here. Um, and now every time I get an incoming SMS, we'll make a request to that uh, endpoint. So what happens when we make a request to that endpoint? So sms.php is going to receive some post data. And it's going to respond with some XML called Twimmel that tells Twilio what to do. And in this case, it's going to be very basic. It's going to literally respond with an SMS. So. Now if you could all pull out your phones, turn the volume way up, and I apologize to the rest of the presenters, and uh, send an SMS to that number, 917-338-4798, and it'll be much more fun if you participate, so I'm going to do it too. And just let me know when you get a reply. You can send absolutely anything you want. Yeah? You got a reply? Awesome. So, cool. yay, so you got an SMS reply. Um, that's pretty cool, but uh, what I would really like to do is uh, call all of you. So what I'm going to do here is actually take all of those messages you just sent in, right, which are stored on your Twilio account, loop through them, and then call you back. So, <clears throat> I'm going to use our PHP helper library, and that allows me to interface with the API using a sort of uh, object-oriented model as opposed to REST endpoints. Are you guys looking back? Can you, uh, whoa, <laughs> still young. Okay, I guess someone's holding mic. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and I'm going to require my API credentials, and then I'm going to start off here by putting in my phone number. And so I'm going to pull every message that was sent to just this phone number, because I have a bunch on my account. And... Let's see, so for every client account SMS messages, right, it's all the SMS, then we are going to check if the SMS was to our phone number, and if it was, we're going to print out who it was from and what it said, and then call you back. So client account calls create from, from our Twilio phone number to your phone number. And then we're going to pass along another one of those URLs. And that is it. So now Twilio is going to call all of you back and execute the instructions at that URL. And that URL is going to read off some text to speech. Welcome to Space Apps. And it's going to dial you into a conference room called Space Apps NYC and send you an SMS. Thanks for calling in. Email john at twilio.com for help or tweet at John Marco. And now I'm going to run it and we'll be able to see all of those awesome messages you sent in. And your phone should start ringing. Let's see. Awesome. <laughs> so pick up the phone when it rings, it'll be good. Did, hold, hold on, hold on. Did someone send a Unicode poo? <laughs> I, think, I think you win space apps already. <laughs> awesome. So uh, that's how Twilio works. It's pretty easy to use. Um, there's a lot of awesome applications for it at Space Apps. Uh, anything that's involved in communications, right? It allows you to interact with anyone's phone, regardless of operating system or carrier or country. Um, so hopefully I'll see some awesome uh, things out there. Thanks, guys. And we're giving away a uh, 
bunch of Arduino kits to the best Twilio hack. So, yeah. Thanks, John. <laughs> we, we, really, we really have a, a, a lot of great things to say about Twilio. Twilio participated last year at Space Apps Challenge, helped with the Spot the Station and a few other challenges. And, you know, especially in, in terms of global importance, you know, there's six billion feature phones out there that can get SMS. So, you know, this is a, I mean, we don't necessarily have Twilio in every country, but, you know, for a lot of places we get coverage on things that people would never have access to. So you're empowering a lot of people in, in developing nations using this kind of tool. Um, and Arduino is great for citizen science. Um, so I'd now like to ask uh, Kevin Galligan from Touch Lab to come up and just say a couple words. Kevin Galligan is a startup bus finalist. I'm, gonna, I'm stealing his thunder a little bit. I know, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. going to like... Go right ahead. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin. Oops, sorry. Okay, um, I'm actually used to being on the mic fairly often, so i got to watch that. Uh, yeah, 2012 Startup Bus finalist, but primarily I'm here because um, I run Touch Lab, which is an Android consulting company. Uh, I'm a developer myself, and actually if anybody needs Android stuff or like JavaScript, database-y, back-end-y kind of things, I'll be milling about. I don't know if we've got a team specifically or whatever. Um, we're a tech-heavy company. We're run by developer and mostly developers and obviously looking to find good people. But mostly I wanted to sponsor this just because I'm a super nerd and NASA's pretty cool. And meeting an astronaut was pretty awesome. So, um, and actually I'm going to indulge in for a second. We're taking a, we're doing an app called One Second Every Day where you take one second of video every day. So this is going to be my little second of video. Uh, and to count of three, if you could all say space apps. One, two, three. Space apps. OK, cool. That's it for me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, do we have a rep from TenGen here? Not yet. Uh, so uh, Tengen is a uh, it's the creators of the MongoDB database. Um, they're another great generous sponsor. Um, they will have some support for you uh, during the weekend. Um, do we have? Do they have credits or are they anything? Is it just free to download? And oh, they are offering a prize for this weekend. Uh, so best use of MongoDB, I think, will be the uh, the prize for there. Uh, next on our list is Shapeways. Come on up. Natalia. There you go. Thanks. Hi guys, um, I'm Natalia and this is Josh and we're from Shapeways. Hi. I'm gonna repeat John's thing. Who has heard of Shapeways? Okay, cool. So for everyone else in the room, Shapeways is a 3D printing marketplace and community um, where you can make, buy, and sell anything 3D printed. Um, essentially what we do is take any 3D file, like an STL or OBJ file, anything you can write with a CAD program, and we, you upload it to our site, we pretty much instantly tell you how much it'll cost in 30 different materials, including steel, ceramics, plastic, and full color, and then you hit buy, and we print it and ship it to you within two weeks-ish. Um, we have two factories, one in Holland and one here in New York, which is really cool. And um, I will let you all know when we start doing tours because I anticipate that question already. <laughs> um, I, I'm not a developer, but Josh is. What I can help you with, um, if any of you choose to do any um, 3D related hacks this weekend, is um, I can help with 3D modeling questions. Um, I know Rhino and a couple of other free 3D modeling programs. So if you have any questions about those, I can answer those. And uh, Josh is going to talk a little bit about our API. And I know um, one other person from Shapeways is here today. Matt, are you here yet? No, he's not. But uh, Matt, when he arrives, you recognize him because he'll probably have a maker bot with him. So he'll be doing like hardware hacking. And uh, yeah, feel free to talk to him as well. All right, this is Josh. Hey, guys. Uh, how, how many have heard of Shapeways before now? <laughs> like 18 or so, awesome. Uh, so we recently launched uh, our new uh, API and it allows using OAuth uh, anyone to sort of upload and uh, 3D print anything in any of our uh, 
63 different materials and finishes, uh, which include uh, plastics, metals, stainless steel, <laughs> ceramics, uh, and some other things that you might be able to use to make a spaceship or, or some other things. So uh, what I have on the screen is one example of a way uh, you could use the API. Uh, here we have a customizable uh, ring, uh, and you can change some uh, aspects of the ring, uh, like how many times the pattern would repeat, for example. Uh, and then it'll dynamically create a new 3D model based on that. And uh, it should show up there if I have a working demo. But if I don't, you could imagine that it works perfectly. <laughs> oh, yes, there it is. Uh, so I just changed the number of repeat on that pattern. For example, uh, what we'd love to do uh, for you guys here today is say, uh, the hardest thing that you could possibly do is to generate a 3D object uh, using code, right? It's complicated, uh, it has to be printable in the end, uh, and, and that's difficult. There's a number of open source libraries that we're using to, to build this demo, for example. Uh, one is called abfab 3 d there's one for JavaScript called 3JS, so if you're into JS, you can get into Node and, and do some crazy stuff. Uh, and then our endpoint is really about uh, manufacturing today. Right, so if you, at the end of the day, want to create a crazy data visualization of the social graph for the people that are using uh, the Twilio API uh, or, or another API, um, you can do that, and then people can actually hold that thing in their hand uh, at the end of uh, your product's life cycle. So what we're hoping is that you'll get into creation uh, and production with Shapeways. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. There, uh, so we're uh, chat channel Shapeways on Freenode. Uh, so if you go there, there will be some folks from Shapeways on our 3D team and on our API team uh, to answer any questions. Uh, and if you share that with the global teams, uh, that would be great. Also, I forgot our prize. <laughs> yeah, we have a prize. So if you do create the coolest space um, app, I keep calling it space hacks, but anyway, if you create the coolest thing using 3D printing, um, we have a $250 printing credit with Shapeways, so you can actually make your thing. Um, so yeah, basically make apps that makes products, which is awesome. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And now I'd like to, uh, to introduce TalkBox. TalkBox is actually a, a really cool thing. We used it in Startup Bus last year uh, to great effect. There you go, Anchor. Thank you. What's up, guys? Uh, the most impressive thing about this this uh, event so far to me is like how diverse this crowd is. I saw everybody like talking on the the mailing list, and I was like, they're like mathematician, geo, engineering, space cadetians, and and it's just awesome. But yeah, you guys are great, uh, and I'm really excited to be here. So who's heard of Talkbox before? Awesome. All right, so uh, what we do is we have a live video API. This is like the markety glossy um, website, but basically we give you a API in JavaScript, in Objective-C, and in Java for web, iOS, and Android, and you can make your users interact like face-to-face -face live. And that typically would be really hard, but our API makes it Pretty simple, I think. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually show you how that works, and with a quick coding demo. And this is always dangerous, but Bear with me. Uh, let's get rid of that. Okay, so basic HTML page. You guys with me so far? Yeah? How many of you guys are um, web developers or know web stuff? Okay, cool. Wow, okay, all right. Almost everybody. All right. Wait, this is really small. Hold on, I'm gonna try and make this bigger. Is that, is that mostly readable? Okay, cool. All right, anyway, so basic HTML page. We got a couple variables set up here in the JavaScript, an API key, a session ID, a token. These are things you get from our dashboard. Not very important for, for like beginners. Um, and I have like an empty div here on the page. It's just ID my cam. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quickly write an OpenTalk app. So first thing I'm gonna do is start a session, which is takes that session ID that we have on the page and I'm gonna go connect to it. But, and that, that actually works by itself, those two lines. But uh, that's, that's not very interesting because we haven't done anything with video yet. 
Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add an event listener. So what this means is like I said connect down here, but I want to know when that actually finishes. And since it's asynchronous, I need to add an event listener to figure out when that's actually done. So this function inside here is going to run when that, that uh, connected event happens. Oops. So in there, I'm just going to say session.publish, and I gave it that, the ID of that div that I showed you earlier, right? So I'm going to go to the output and say run. And ta-da. See? All right. So far, so good, right? Now, I'm um, going to try and up it up a little more. And I'm going to listen to another event that's called stream created. And what that does is it basically says, like, every time somebody does that publish thing, I want to know about it again and run this other function. So what I'm going to do inside here is call another function called add streams. And I'm going to write that function right here. And inside here, it's just going to take an array of these streams, which come in on the event. And I'm going to go over that array. And I'm going to take one stream. And I'm going to subscribe to it. So let's try this one more time. Go to the output, run it. So you see me. And then after a short pause, if I hit save on this side, let's do that again. Oh, yeah, down here. You see me again, right? So that was me publishing, and that's me subscribing to myself, but that's kind of weird. Uh, um, no, 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 I meant to do that, I swear. <laughs> so there's, there's this uh, if conditional here. Hold up, let me get rid of this. Okay, so if the stream that's coming in is the same connection as my stream, which is my connection, then I don't actually want to subscribe, so I'll just early return, right? And now, if I do that again, you see me up here, and you won't see me down there. And I'm going to give you guys a URL if you have your laptop open. So, if anybody wants, if anybody wants to join me in a quick video chat, that's, uh, that's the URL that you can uh, hit right now. And sorry. Oh, the URL. JSBin.com slash A Oberoi slash last. Because the last thing I edited. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> What's up? How's it going, John? This guy's really excited. <laughs> um, oh, hey. Anyway, so that was like, I don't know, like 10 lines of code. And we just started, and uh, we just recreated like Skype. So that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> uh, you can do lots of fun stuff with this. Like you can notice that like we give you like all the little building blocks, but not like to the level of like, what's your codec and what's your resolution and all that stuff. So we take all the hard, boring stuff out of the way and give you like the tools it takes to make really awesome video applications. Anyway, we're giving away a prize for the best use of OpenTalk. Uh, it is a model rocket and a stargazer. Ooh, space geeks, yeah? All right, awesome. So, good luck, guys. Have fun, and uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, TalkBox. Uh, do we have someone from Mashery here? Yes, Colin, come on up. Great to see you. Hey, guys. Oh, sorry. Uh, anyone ever heard of Mashery? Okay, very good. Um, I'll be real quick, just to put it easy. Mashery is your one-stop shop for many different APIs. So check out dev.mashery.com. Sign up for a key. Some of our APIs, we have ESPN. Uh, we have uh, you send it. You know, these are all APIs that are for the taking. So please uh, register. And uh, you have all these different APIs to play with today, kind of like Lego pieces in building your apps. If you have any questions, come to me. If I can't answer them, I will ask someone else that works at Mashery. <laughs>
Um, but uh, definitely uh, check it out. And uh, we're here in New York. And uh, my name is Colin McCabe, and I'm a, a platform strategist. Um, if you use any of the APIs uh, from our API Explorer, uh, you get some fancy prizes. They may include t-shirts or stickers. <laughs> That's all we got for you. <laughs> OK, bye. Thanks, Colin. Ari, would you like to come up next? You're, you're on deck. It's uh, Aviary, an image editing platform. All right, uh, I am Ari Fuchs. I'm a developer evangelist at Aviary. Uh, how many of you guys have heard of Aviary? Okay, a bunch of you, cool. Um, so we're a photo editor SDK. Um, we power a bunch of awesome apps. Um, we power filters, um, but our real product is a standalone, uh, well, an editor that you can embed inside your own apps. Um, so it's customizable, it's cross-platform. We have an SDK for iOS, Android, Windows Phone 7, Windows 8, and web. Um, and they're all quick, easy to integrate, they're all customizable. You can make them look like your own apps. Um, you can change the layout, the or not the layout, you can change the colors, you can change um, the icons and uh, you can choose which tools to include. So not all of these challenges, not all of these apps um, need all of the tools. I mean, you may not need filters for a lot of your apps, but we do have uh, text, we have cropping, rotation, uh, saturation, warmth, um, all of those tools available. And uh, here's, a, here's a good list of those. Uh, we power a bunch of companies, so people trust us, you should trust us, we're all good. Uh, we also have in-app content, uh, so if you uh, are building any of those challenges that are educational tools or uh, fun games to uh, engage students, um, I have an API key uh, that I can give out to you guys that has access to a bunch of space stickers um, that you can play within the app and that could be fun for kids. Um, or adults. So getting started is really quick and easy. You go to aviary.com, you sign up for an API key, you create an app, and then you get the code. Uh, so I'm gonna do that real quick um, and show you exactly what that looks like. So, here's aviary. I have my account, I add an app. Let's make it a web app, space. All right, now for web, it's even simpler than the other platforms. You just go to the code generator. You choose your platform or app. You choose which tools you want. Let's just select all of them. Choose that guy and the code is generated. So let's see what this looks like. Paste that in there. Um, I've got my trusty image here. And let's see, let's replace this and this. And I usually do um, a meme that fits the, the hackathon, um, but I couldn't find any space memes, so office space will have to do. And uh, yeah, so there it is on the page. You can watch the editor. It has these awesome tools. You can crop, you can rotate, resize. Um, we have an awesome color splash tool, which allows you to selectively fill in color, which is awesome. Um, we got our text tool for annotations, if you're going to do stuff with that. Um, so let's see. Let's pretend you didn't see that. Um, and it, it will update the image in the background. So that is what it takes to create an app and edit an image. And I'm sorry, I'm just gonna try this one more time because I've never seen that. 
Saving, saving. Okay, well, I'll see why that works later. Um, so, yeah, so there are a bunch of challenges that would benefit from us. Um, there are the challenge, some of the challenges, uh, Reach for the Stars, um, it's to build an engaging uh, application for kids. Um, some of the others involve uh, pre-processing photos to apply them to a map tile um, or on a 3D model. Uh, you can use, you, or, or to engage in social media. Um, our editor is great for stuff like that if you're crowdsourcing this material. Um, so go ahead and check us out. Um, we're also offering a prize for best use of our editor in one of these challenges. Um, so an Arduino kit plus uh, a camera kit and a micro SD card breakout board. So you can build your own camera hardware hacks. Um, here are some awesome links. I will be here all weekend. Uh, my name is Ari Fuchs and check us out. Thanks. Thanks, Ari. Uh, and yeah, Arduino and camera combo is a really powerful uh, combination. If you uh, happen to catch our data visualization event that we held prior, uh, we had Liz Berry from the public laboratory demonstrating uh, aerial views of the BP oil spills using Arduino plus camera being flown on a kite. So be creative. You can create really cool stuff like that. Uh, so now I'd like to ask Don from uh, Amazon uh, AWS to come up and just give a, a brief talk about what they have available. Hi everybody, my name is Don Morrill. I'm the uh, chairman of the New York Technology Council, so I want to take a minute to thank Mike and Alice for all the great work they're doing this weekend. For those of you that were here last year, it's been an incredible change since last year. It's really great to see so many people here. In addition to uh, being chairman of the council, I also happen to run the solutions architecture team for Amazon Web Services. So I'm going to ask the opposite question and see who doesn't know what Amazon Web Services does. Nobody. <laughs> Excellent. That's the one I like to see. Okay, two people. You can talk to me afterwards. Anyway, I'm happy to be here today and uh, represent Amazon Web Services. For those of you that happen to need a supercomputer or a graphical cluster or storage or queuing or email or any of the 30 plus services that Amazon Web Services offers, I'm coming today with $100 in AWS credits for every single team. I can help you get set up on that and spin up all the services and the computers and the supercomputers and the storage that you need. So please come and see me. It's great for running Mongo clusters. If you happen to want to run a Mongo cluster, I'm happy to help you guys get started on AWS this morning. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, David from Foursquare, come on up. Hey guys, oh, everyone does that. Uh, I'm David, I'm from Foursquare. Uh, so if you guys kind of like have heard of us before, uh, people like think of us as kind of like this game thing, you'll check into places, like earn points and badges, but what we really are is we're all about our data. And so we have one of the most powerful um, location databases out there. And then so you can use us um, like to find like uh, like like interesting places around you and places you might uh, places that your users might be interested in. So um, if you're doing any of those uh, kind of like mapping challenges or if there's just like Earth Day one as well, like I think that there'll be like a really great use to see like kind of like doing a mashup of like of maybe like some of these like tile like map layers as well as like what's interesting in the area to see if there's any kind of like uh, correlations like that. Um, you can find out more about us at developer.forsquare.com and then I'll be sticking around for like part of the day as well and then we can just chat and like, you know, uh, kind of like uh, throw out a few ideas. So, thanks. Thank you, David. Uh, okay, so I, th I think that's everybody. Oh, Mike, Mike is losing charge. Uh, so I'm going to try and make this as quick as I can. Um, there are other sponsors uh, who are not here today but are offering other services. Uh, just come up and, and ask us. Um, you can see that you'll be able to see the sponsors like Squarespace is offering a site. Um, CardoDB will be um, offering some uh, credits as well. Uh, so what we'd like to do now uh, is start organizing teams. Uh, so um, if you guys want to get up, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to basically break down this room and uh, set it back up again for tables and chairs. On each of the walls here in the back, we've written uh, challenge names onto the posters. So try and gravitate towards the challenges. Uh, look around at each of the, um, the posters on the walls. If you wouldn't mind picking up your chair. Um, yeah, just uh, go, go all the way back into the cafe area for now. We're going to break this room down a little bit, and then we'll have you come back in. 
that, that's more convenient. Good job, Thank you.